Okay, so today we are installing some drop spindles on a 69 Beetle. It's a disc brake ball joint front end. And here's the gap that we begin with, hoping to drop it by two and a half inches. And fingers crossed it doesn't rub at the end. So we start by taking the tire off the wheel and the, um, the pry the dust cover off, off the hub. Now this nut is held on, it's got an Allen key locking mechanism on it so you need to loosen it off before you try and loosen the actual nut itself. It's pretty straightforward. And there we go, take the nut off, wind it out, and there we go. Okay, so what I'm, what I'm doing at the back here is I'm taking the disc brake off. It's a disc brake front beam, it's held on by two bolts and the hub pretty much will slide out with a bearing on the inside and the outside as well. If you have not, they come out. And you've got the thing. So this is a dust cover that we're going to crack off. Now when we reinstall this, the new uh, drop spindles don't actually have a place for the dust cover. So it won't be going back on. We'll put it somewhere safe just in case. Doing a, there are a uh, bolt holding the bottom arm on and the top arm on, which will take off. There's one. So the spindle itself's pretty much only held on by the the bottom arm and the top arm in the in in the steering arm, pretty much. The steering arm where it connects to the steering knuckles held on by a little split pin as well. All uh, right, ball joint separator was needed. They were pretty tight. You had to pop it off with that. You couldn't. You can't bang them off. You've got to use a proper tool, unless you want to replace your ball joints all the time. So here we go. It took a bit of force, but it cracks them off. And there we go. That's the original spindle, and where it would go. And here's the drop spindle. You can see how the spindle in the in the steering arm is a bit bigger, a bit higher. Right. So we put it back on. Took a bit. Wind that back on. Now the um, oh, I, I figured out that afterwards I needed to take the shock absorber off to get it to work. Now the um, when you put the the upper arm on, there's actually an eccentric nut. That's part of it, and it it controls camber. So before you really take it off, you should mark where the there's a mark on the nut tells you where it is. So you can put it back in the same spot. And otherwise, you're going to have excessive camber either way. And pretty much putting it all back together. So shock absorber, upper and lower and steering arm. Now these were later on torqued using a torque wrench to the proper torque settings. A uh, bit of grease on the hub itself, on the spindle. And then the hub goes back on. So it's all fairly straightforward. Um, probably the biggest thing was uh, getting the ball joints you know, separated from the, the spindle itself using the separator, but that's about it. And we tighten this back up. Like I said, later on I went back and talked all these up to the proper settings. Uh, this is just a, a bit of an idea if you're thinking about doing this yourself, what's involved and you know it's not a big job but you need to you know have a few tools and a bit of a bit of know-how. So the hub, the dust cover back on, disc brake back on, just be careful not to twist the hoses when you're putting it back on and then wheel back on and we should be able to drop it down and see where we're at. So there we are. Now it did settle a tiny bit more than that afterwards but so far, no real rub issues. It's got 16580 tyres on the 15 inch rims. So stock rims, stock tyres pretty much. And stock two and a half inch drop. So there we go. Look, if you like the video, um, feel free to subscribe, like, or comment below about anything else you've seen today. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you later.